This video was brought to you by us, Slidebean. Make beautiful slide presentations in no time. Get one free month by signing up at slidebean.com slash YouTube. Today's episode of Starter Forensics is about live streaming apps, something that we all take very much for granted today, as we're not impressed anymore by seeing anyone going live on social media. And they broadcast literally whatever, which is probably part of the problem here. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. While the idea of live broadcasting is anything but new, back in 2014, 2015, it took the internet by storm when mobile applications made it easier for people to broadcast with just a tap and most importantly, made it easier for audiences to connect with streamers. Before this, a live broadcast required a lot more technical stuff, and that's why it was reserved for television studios and live stream. So back when the idea of live streaming from smartphones was fresh, and the race to win that social media branch was just beginning, two apps had a death match to become number one, Meerkat and Periscope. In this episode, we will review some key elements of this battle, some differences between the apps, the role that Twitter had in the story, and finally, who won and where the winner stands today. This is Starter Forensics. First, we have Meerkat, the live streaming app that became hot thanks to 2015's South by Southwest. It drew the public's attention and gained traction at a pace that made everybody think it was the next big thing. The app had launched just a few days before the festival and got there without a lot of marketing money or sponsorships. But it quickly broke through the endgame, users and word of mouth. They reported their user base doubled during South by Southwest and got to a few hundred thousands of users. It also got a lift from popular characters who jumped on board, like Jimmy Fallon, who broadcasted and tweeted using the app at the event. But even after that South by Southwest bus, other celebrities like Jared Leto or Madonna kept it alive and the community started looking big and strong. Of course, they weren't the first. There had been previous apps attempting to make live streaming social and win in that space, but they all had failed so far. Meerkat was simple enough and was the first one to succeed in making it cool and social, but it did so by completely piggybacking on Twitter. So let's do a quick throwback here and see how that app worked. To start, you could sign up with your Twitter account, of course, and just like that, have all of your followers available on Meerkat. The homepage was simple. You could see a list of current live streams and you were prompted to type in what was happening very much in Twitter's fashion. Then you hit the stream button to start transmitting with your phone right away or schedule it for later. In any case, as soon as you tap one of those, all of your contacts on Twitter would get notified and get the link to jump into Meerkat and tune in. The stream allowed viewers to like and comment in real time, all of which was posted as well on the tweet. And it of course could be retweeted. In a nutshell, Meerkat's whole reach relied on Twitter's platform, but their party got to an end pretty soon. Just shortly after, Twitter acquired Periscope for $86 million. That's March 2015. Twitter was betting hard on video and had acquired Vine just a few months earlier. Go check out that video to find out what happened. So only a few days before Meerkat's breakthrough in South by Southwest, Twitter had acquired the other one app that could do what Meerkat did, but better. This was a kick in the butt for Meerkat, not only because of having a strong new competitor in the space, but also because Twitter did restrict some of Meerkat's features that relied on their platform, seriously harming its social component. According to Ben Rubin, Meerkat's founder, Twitter did this in a very short notice of really just a couple of hours before pulling the plug, crippling their ability to react. Twitter's actions severely affected Meerkat, of course, but they also validated the market space. And Meerkat had done enough to be able to raise $12 million on their Series B at a $40 million valuation. This is according to TechCrunch. So 2015 was a big year for live streaming apps, and that's how fierce and fast the competition was, blow by blow. The investment round was led by Greylock Partners, and one of the investments, James Josh Elman, posted a very optimistic note on Medium, where he even referenced the symbiosis between Meerkat and Twitter. Some argued that it would have made sense for Twitter to acquire Meerkat and leverage all the connections the app already had with it. But as you know, they followed Periscope's development instead, apparently not paying much attention to Meerkat's incursion in their platform. And finally, went the Periscope route, despite Meerkat was already a trend on Twitter and Periscope hadn't even launched yet. Now, let's talk about Periscope. In essence, it did pretty much the same thing as Meerkat, but users reported that it did a better job handling delays in live streams and the UI overall was better, which ultimately just facilitated the social factor. This made sense because Periscope's development took about a year, while Meerkat took just about 10 weeks to come up to life. 
and that resulted in Periscope delivering a more polished product and experience. Back in its early days, Periscope founders Kaivon Bakeport and Joe Bernstein said they wanted to create the closest thing possible to teleportation. Yeah, somehow the idea of being able to watch a live video broadcast of whatever you wanted to see from your phone appealed to them as something close to teleporting back in 2014. Periscope founders have talked about how the idea was burned when Bernstein was traveling in Istanbul and protests burst in Taksim Square. He then wanted to have real-time information and visual input of the development of the protests, but all he could get were tweets from people claiming to be there. So from there, they dreamed in a future in which you could just pick up your phone and tune in to watch and be transported to any place or experience in real time. Yet another key difference Periscope had with Meerkat was that live streams could be replayed if the streamer decided to keep them. This probably gave Periscope an advantage and it relates to a fundamental fact of consuming content on the internet. Its nature is asynchronous. That's right, the social media mindset isn't really one for appointing, viewing, and, and our feeds are more and more asynchronous every time. This means that you should probably look for ways to make your content available to more people, adapting to their behavior and schedule, and not the other way around. Unless you're famous or you're broadcasting a big event, chances are you're gonna struggle to find an audience for your live stream at a single moment in time. A stroll on a beautiful beach sunset on your kid's theater play may have value for those close to you, but it would hardly appeal to any larger audience. Now, say your kid does something funny in the play or something unexpected happens while walking at the beach, and suddenly the video may be interesting to others, but the synchronicity of watching it in real time just loses relevance. That's ultimately a reality that both Meerkat and Periscope, or really any other social live stream app, had to fight with. Still, in August 2015, more than 10 million Periscope accounts had been created, and nearly 2 million used the app on a daily basis. However, by that time, the app churn rates were high as well. Some sources reported being as high as 50%. And it was doing better than Meerkat. Now, just as you could have imagined and expected, looking at the big picture, it was only a matter of time before the big brother came into the live streaming game. That's right, in August 2015, Facebook did what everybody expected it to do sooner or later and released Facebook Live, becoming the final boss to defeat. YouTube Live had existed for a while now, but it wasn't by nature a mobile-centered experience. Already being king of social media, Facebook was already much more than just live broadcasts, and it was the natural thing to do. So for the rest of 2015 and until late 2016, Meerkat continued fighting, releasing some interesting features like allowing to stream using GoPro cameras and the developer platform and the APIs. Periscope did their thing too, with features like an analytics dashboard for the streamers or a map integration to see live broadcasts around the world by location. But eventually, in September 2016, Meerkat went belly up and its account on Twitter was shut down and made private. Shortly after, it got removed from the App Store, leaving Periscope victorious and ready for the real fight against Facebook. Ben Rubin, Meerkat's founder himself, acknowledged that the category of broadcast, one too many, wasn't breaking as a daily habit to rely on completely, and it was too far away from the everyday user. By the time Meerkat died, the team had been working on a new project for about six months, an app called House Party. This one is still available in the App Store, and it's something like a video chatting with groups of friends. It does not seem to do much more than what you can do with, say, FaceTime these days, but still, it has managed to survive longer than Meerkat, but without all the hype. Surprisingly enough, Periscope has made it through and is still alive today, but all the buzz and the excitement are gone. No need to say that Facebook Live became the social live streaming king. Pretty much since it launched and leveraged the almost 2 billion monthly active users, it had. Not a lot of analysis is required to know that any social app trying to dethrone Facebook is fighting against the odds. We're not really sure about what keeps Periscope going, considering this staggering competition, not only from Facebook, but also from YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat. Casually logging into Periscope can be a rather underwhelming experience, as you scroll down a bunch of boring looking streams, each with only a handful of viewers. There are other use cases, of course, but Facebook also dominates those being the ground where brands and celebrities already advertise and monetize. So for the sake of numbers, here are a few stats of Facebook Live and Periscope, although the comparison may even look foolish. In 2018, Facebook's live broadcasts reached 3.5 billion, while Periscope had only passed the 200 million milestone in late 2016. The same year, Periscope users viewed an average of 110 years worth of video time daily. Well. Facebook users now view an average of 3,000 years worth of video time daily, and that's more than 26 million hours of video on a daily basis. It's just jaw-dropping. 
So in conclusion, live video streaming isn't a great stand alone for social media, and it requires exposure to a fairly big audience and user base to sustain interest. Just like Nearcat did in its early days, leveraging a connection with Twitter, and ultimately as Facebook did with its own platform, remaining the true winner of live video streaming and social media overall. Thank you.